I was born in the United States. My parents both immigrated here. I'm really curious about the natural world. So I started off in astronomy and, and astrophysics. I wanted to reach out and try to you know, touch the stars. <laughs> that led me to spending a lot of time alone on a research project trying to look for planets outside of our solar system. And in 2003, I was able to discover a planet in high school using a telescope I built. I wanted to know what the universe was made of, what we're made of, where we're going as a species. And these questions just drove me into science. Fluid lensing was an idea that I came up with when I was a graduate student at Stanford, and it really came out of just this lack of information about our ocean. We were studying all of Earth's land masses using satellites and aircraft, like the Landsat program, for decades. It's helped us create the national park system and inform those boundaries, but for the ocean there is no such knowledge. Main innovation behind fluid lensing was coming up with a technology, an optical sensing technology that could fly on a drone, could fly on a, a spacecraft one day. So if you're looking to understand how those ecosystems are changing as a function of climate change, having a meter resolution is, is not good enough. We're able to understand not only what the 3D structure of these organisms are, but how they're changing on really, really short time scales. And that's, I think, really crucial to protecting ecosystems right now. MIDAR was my second big invention at NASA and actually won the Invention of the Year Award just last year. So this is the Multispectral Imaging Detection and Active Reflectance Instrument. So it's a, a very uh, powerful active imaging um, system and we're trying to use it now to get deeper in the ocean and that's where we start really understanding what we have on our planet. What attracted me here was first, I was already working with a number of faculty at the University of Miami, and they were just some of the top minds in their field. And I think of the potential that that comes with and the responsibility. The resources that this position comes with, the helicopter platform, the solar electric vessel that I've been building, all of those are designed to advance these technologies so that we can finish bridging that gap between land and ocean mapping. There's eight projects I'm bringing with me that are uh, federally funded. What I'm most excited about is developing an, and maturing instrument technologies here. So using the helicopter platform we have in, in ACES to do really groundbreaking research with heavy lift platforms. There's really no place better to do that than the University of Miami. I'm also really excited to bring the knowledge I have from working at a space agency to Miami and helping develop a CubeSat program to get small satellites up into orbit with student payloads um, that are developed and, and built by students and then eventually fly in low Earth orbit. The end goal for me for a lot of instruments is, you know, you test it on aircraft, you get it to higher altitudes, and then you get it into orbit. And then that becomes a legacy instrument like Landsat that really informs everything we know on land for the last 40 years. I want to leave a legacy and preserve what I can and help inform science in the future. And so for me, the endowment is not only a sort of a proof of concept, the future is bright because there are people like this out there that can provide resources to you know, kids like me who <laughs> grew up in very, very different circumstances uh, from a completely different world. But the common connection is, is science and a shared understanding and appreciation for the natural world. I think of the potential that that comes with and the responsibility it comes with to do the right thing to make sure that we're doing really good science, uh, developing new technologies, and then passing that knowledge on to the next generation.